We're asking if junior doctor strikes in the days before the election are a step too far. 0207 862 -222. Junior doctors have started their 11th walkout this morning demanding the 35% pay rise that we've heard so much about. The strike, which the NHS says will cause major disruption, will end on Tuesday, 48 hours before voters go to the polls. An NHS executive said there is no reason for industrial action this close to an election, especially as both the Tories and Labour have said that they will restart the negotiations. Matthew Taylor of the NHS Confederation said, when no political party is in a position to bring the dispute to a close, strikes are a very bitter pill for staff and patients to swallow. The BMA have said the strikes are an opportunity for the Prime Minister to show he cares about junior doctors even at this late stage. Gitto, what do you think? It's utterly futile because uh, strike is meant to be a sort of weapon of leverage, if you like, to help a negotiation that, you know, is not going the way you want. There is no negotiation at the moment. There's no negotiation possible. I'll tell you what I would do. If I was Rishi Sunak, I'd say, do you know what? This election is probably lost, so I'll make myself really popular. I'll give the junior doctors 30%. Mm. Would he be allowed to do that 35. by the civil service at yeah. this point in time? Well, what about they that? would say you cannot tie the hands of your successor. How about that? You just say 35% for the doctors and I'm, and I'm out next week. Do you know what? I would buy that as an argument if we hadn't been talking about this for the last however many years. Like, there have been so many opportunities for Rishi and the appropriate minister to sit down around the table with the BMA and the junior doctors, and they have simply failed to do that. So, yeah, I would love to think that Rishi would, would, would offer that, but we know he wouldn't because he's had every opportunity to mm. do that and he hasn't. But also, isn't, isn't this, the, the demand, isn't it out of date now? Because they made that demand when uh, inflation was 12%. Mm. It's now gone back to 2%. So I don't, I don't know how... Well, that's the serious point, because the reason inflation has come down is because Rishi Sunak has made tough, unpopular decisions not toward pay rises like 35%. No, no. So if you, don't you agree had, with that. if you had a left-wing government that said, yeah, sure, let's spread it around, then guess what? Inflation would not have come down. Paula. Because, of course, we're in the remit of where the politicians and the MPs are they got their pay increase. So to, to suggest that somehow Rishi has these magical powers that he was able to reduce inflation whilst at the same time watching it increase, increase and doing absolutely nothing about it just simply doesn't make sense. What, what needed to happen, as I say, is that our public service workers needed to be respected and their views needed to be heard and the negotiation table needed to happen and it hasn't. Let's talk to somebody who's on the picket line, Dr Andrew Myerson. It's, so are you still keen on this 35%, Andrew, or, or, or are you going to move it down if Labour get in? Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm in picket line outside of uh, St Thomas Hospital here in London. Um, look, the, I'm a rank and file member of the British Medical Association. I have full faith in my union and our negotiating team to, to advocate on, on our behalf. Um, uh, we, we shouldn't have had to, uh, to, to be here right now. The last credible offer from uh, this government, I don't know what number health secretary we now, now, now we're dealing with, uh, it was back in December and it uh, was uh, woefully insufficient. Uh, and then for the last uh, six months, uh, our union has been strung along um, made promises after promises uh, that this government never kept. And as voters know, uh, as, as the general public knows, faith in our politicians right now is at an all-time low. And so that's why, you know, within the last couple of weeks, this government could have put something down on paper to demonstrate to us that they took this issue seriously, that they understood our patient safety crisis is, is, is awful right now, and that staff are, are leaving in record numbers and they could have they could have met with our union they could have put something down that the that that uh, uh, opposition parties and any future new government could have could have supported as well Dr. Masa, they won't they won't you won't accept. resolve this and they chose not to okay you won't accept the offers they've made so why are you striking in a general election campaign when the only people you're going to hurt are patients well right now it is it is vitally important that uh, everybody understands the magnitude of the crisis. For so many years, our seniors, the heads of the Royal Colleges, the heads of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, uh, speaking about, we have you know, crisis after crisis, and it's no longer just in winter. We're seeing record numbers of, of people waiting record, waiting, uh, record enough time in our 80s. Patients cannot see their GP. They can't be seen in A&E. We have the longest waiting list in anxious history now, a waiting list that in the last couple of months has gone up without any strike action whatsoever. 
Okay. And patients need to understand that when there are 20,000 doctors that are leaving the NHS every single year, when we're losing 40,000 nurses every single year to, to places like Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, uh, it, it, is, it is a massive waste of taxpayer money, a massive waste right. of, of talent and energy that, that we spend training these people only to, make, only to, to see them leave. Thank you so much, Dr. Andrew Myerson, on the picket line. Thank you. I've, we've got to get on and get some calls. Grace in London, what do you think of that? Uh, yeah, I'm not buying it. I mean, I, I, I think we're, we're really fortunate to have more healthcare access in this country than a lot of humanity does. Um, a lot of people in our world actually can't see a doctor at all, ever. Um, but obviously, the NHS is really, really struggling. Yeah. And these doctors are not striking saying, you know, we will stop striking if the NHS is given more money. They're striking saying, we will only stop if you give us more money. Um, and as someone who's generally on the left, I do not understand fellow left-wingers being so in support of people who are on course to earn a lot more in their lifetimes than the average worker. But they're not average workers, are they? That's, I mean, that the, a well, doctor is not an average worker. I'm, 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 well aware, I'm well aware of that. I'm not disputing that they should earn more than, than most people because they, they have a lot of stress and they, they do a lot of studying. But they're, they're already on course to earn a lot over the course of their lifetimes as compared to the needs of a human being in Britain and what everyone else has to live on. So to be demanding so much more seems to me to be fundamentally, I don't know, I don't want to say selfish, but that, that's how it feels, okay, frankly. Grace, and thank, it, it, thank you. Thank you so much. So, yeah, it's still on that 35% pay claim. That's the issue. Sharon in Staffordshire, do you think they're wrong to strike at this moment or is it the best moment to go on strike to just remind us all what they're moment. campaigning for? Best moment. The best moment for them to go on strike, I'm glad they've done it now. It's not supposed to be an easy ride. They're, hit, they're, they're doing it to prove a point, Jeremy. It, it, you know, this government are happy wasting taxpayers' money, giving billions to foreign aid, billions a day for uh, refugees and asylum seekers. But what about the doctors and nurses in this country? They well, work hard. And Grace, I'm sorry, Grace hasn't got a clue about what she's talking about. These doctors and nurses work really hard. And they deserve, they, they deserve, sorry, 35%. They deserve every penny. Yeah. And I'm glad it's, they've it's, gone on It's, it's going to be, I mean, I, I'm just thinking about, Gitta, your, your suggestion that, that Rishi Sunak says, all right, I'm not going to win the election. I'm going to pay the 35% and let Labour clear that up. But actually, Labour, it'd be perfect for Labour because they'd say, well, we have to pay it because, you know, that character messed it all up. Yeah, so, so, so it's been slightly flippant, but, you know, it, it, it would be a careful what you wish for kind of moment. But it's a tricky moment for Labour if they get in. It is, because then what do they do? They unpay it or they don't honour well, it? Regardless of whether Sunak yeah. settles it, how do they deal with it when they get in? Or do you think the doctors will say, look, 35% wasn't serious? They're going to find it's really hard to keep their coalition on board. Uh, steel workers are planning strikes uh, next month when Labour in power. The truth about the NHS, I fear, is that it, uh, it has some of the most able and compassionate and wonderful people on the planet in doctors and nurses and the clinical front line. But it is, in terms of the management, appallingly managed. We spend the equivalent of the GDP, the entire product of Greece on the NHS. Surely if you ran it better, we could pay the clinical staff more. We could all see our doctors mm. and register with the dentists and all that. So the answer has got to be a bit more sophisticated than we need to pour ever more you know, sack loads of money into this. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, system. we keep coming back to this. It doesn't, it doesn't work. It's broken. You can't, the, you know, when the person said we've got more access to a GP than many people in the world who've never seen a doctor, I'm thinking that's not a very high bar. Yeah. Most, a lot of people don't know what their GP looks like. Well, I, I think I also wanted to be able to say to Grace that we need to remember that this 35% is a negotiation, OK? It's about know. them saying that this is what we want. Let's negotiate. Everybody understands that when you negotiate, you might not always get what you want. And it may be that it's 35% over two years, three years, four years, five years. We don't know that. But the point is, it's not about it being a pay increase per se. It's about bringing them up to date in terms of their um, uh, of, of what they should have been receiving throughout the last so, so many years. Mm. They haven't been receiving what they should have been receiving. Well, I mean, that's in dispute because we had a very low inflation until about two years ago. Barry in Greater Manchester, hi. Hey, Barry. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. How have you been? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, not bad, thanks. So what do you think about this? Well, basically, um, I'm very, very um, concerned about the fact that this strike has been called at this point in time. 
I think it's very politically motivated and driven by um, the view from the strikers that if they do this now, it will make their case even more valuable, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and I feel very, very strongly that the truth of the matter is that when doctors sign up to be a doctor, they sign up to look after the patients. And it seems to me that the, this ethos has been completely dismantled by what's been going on recently. Okay, Barry, thank you. Sean, in, Sean in, go on. I just want to go on if I can. Sean in County Durham. Do you think How are you doing? All right, mate. I'll tell you what it is. Why don't they stop sending money abroad to all these wars and things like that? Right? Right. Well, so, so, send money abroad and start paying the, uh, the doctors and nurses what they're entitled so, so to. So don't, fu don't fund U joke. Ukraine. This, this country is a joke. Stop sending money abroad. OK, don't fund Ukraine? No, don't fund nobody till you sort your own people out. Well, I guess we'd never send any... Well, that's a lot of, it comes back to that a lot, doesn't it? Don't start sending money abroad. Do you know what? If we spent money wisely abroad, there would be uh, better conditions in some of these countries. There'd be less migration. Those countries would suffer less. They'd be more likely to be great trading partners. And we wouldn't have as many illegal immigrants crossing the channel. So if you look at the big picture and you spent money wisely abroad, Change it would be the a whole great world. investment. Well.